Good morning, everybody. My name is Ahanu, and I want to welcome you to this Akashic Records online session about God and original creation. Our seasoned participants will know from where these sessions originated, but for our newcomers today, it's important to give you a tiny little bit of background and an explanation as to what to expect. Since late 2009, Angel Rose and myself have been meeting with individuals in small, unique little groups in Ireland, New York, North Carolina and California. And these groups of individuals all wanted answers to world problems, healing, life's purpose, life after death, religion, science, ETs, the question of who am I and why am I here. And most of you are aware that the answers to these questions became the basis for Angel Rose's first book in the 10 book Honest to God series called A Time of Change, which is available at atimeofchange.info. And her new book, due out next spring, is called The Nature of Reality, and that can be pre-ordered from thenatureofreality.info. Now remember that throughout these sessions, Angel Rose is not in a trance, and neither is she channeling through any spiritual or psychic entity, spirit, angel, or ascended master. She's downstepping this information and knowledge directly from source. Now for the benefit of our new visitors, it's important to point out the general procedures for today, especially those that are connected via computer. The chat function on the left side of your screen is great for chat between us and amongst yourselves, but for questions to Angel Rose, please use the questions and answers button at the top of your screen. It should be labeled in gray Q and A, and it's these questions that will be answered with priority throughout the session today. Now do be aware also that this session is being recorded, but we will not use people's personal names anywhere in the session. That's simply to ensure the privacy of all participants. And finally, we ask you that once we close the session today, please do go to World of Empowerment website and leave your comments about the session and about your experiences from the session today. So that's the end of the formal introductions. I'd like now to welcome our very own beloved, Angel Rose. Good morning, everybody. Thank you for joining us today. This session proves to be quite interesting. And uh, I have to tell you all that I have attempted to answer some of these questions uh, a few times in my my journeys. And, uh, you know, I, I go into infinity with, with God and uh, don't ever arrive at an end. So I hope that we can get more clarity today about God and creation. I also want to remind you all about my upcoming workshop on how to read the Akashic Records. It will be February 22nd and 23rd in San Diego. I am looking for a beautiful location. I'm taking my time with this. I don't want us in a regular hotel meeting room. I'm looking for something by the beach to provide a beautiful atmosphere for us all to be able to do the meditations that are going to be involved in the class and the psychic exercises. So if you are interested in coming to that, please go to worldofempowerment.com and go ahead and register. All right, so let us go ahead and open up the prayer for today. All right, so before we begin, don't forget, don't be shy about putting those questions in that chat box. We really, really welcome your questions. The feeling I have saying the prayer for this topic today is I feel I'm actually being transported upward into a vast, vast field of crystalline light. It's not even white light, it's crystalline white, it's crystal clear. I have a very ethereal and lofty sensation all through my body. So let's go ahead then, Ahano. Okay. Our first question today is a very general one in terms of how did creation begin and will it ever end? It's a heavy duty one, Ahano, right off the start, isn't it? Just a second. Yeah. Well, I'm just going to have to give it to everybody moment by moment this week. Like I say, I feel I am suspended in a incredible sea of 
life force energy and vibration and being raised up higher and higher I feel much love so much love I'm moving into a vast vast place of love so when you're asking me about how did creation begin I'm feeling it has a lot to do with love so just a minute and desire I'm feeling desire as I'm feeling this love so here's the picture everybody maybe you could all imagine this with me imagine yourself floating in a sea of beautiful colors what I'm looking at is waveforms you know they're not straight they are undulating I guess is the best word and they're everywhere it's beautiful undulating waves of light and color all colors and as I'm moving into that I'm feeling bathed in this incredible love and desire I mean it is everywhere it's all I'm surrounded by it all and creation coming into being seems to have something to do with this desire love and desire of of an initial creator so that is how they're saying creation first came into being came in by love and desire very powerful powerful feeling I'm having and I don't see that it will ever end it's like once the desire for creation was it's a permanent thing it feels like it's a it's a function now that will never end I just keep seeing more and more desire of it more and more love surrounding surrounding it intense love just incredible love so what I'm saying is I'm going to use the word creation simultaneous with the word life and I think we probably should ask what source is after this Ahana because I am feeling a desire for life to be expressed which is what they're calling creation just give me a few more minutes everybody well that's that's the end of that question uh -huh. okay let's go straight into that next big question then who is God source who or what is God let's just say if there is a God I suppose we should go there too shouldn't we okay so just one second everyone please bear with me because I am being transported to a very different frequency and uh, it's taking me a minute so bear with me now I'm in a huge huge how do I describe this if you could imagine an, a gigantic white Sun SUN it's white it's not yellow or red it's white and it and I can go in it it's not solid it's it's like a I'm entering it going into this white sphere beautiful huge radiating sphere of white white light so I'm entering it just a minute and it's interesting because as I'm entering it I am in a what I would call a tunnel or a hallway I'm now in it and I'm walking as if I'm walking in a hallway I can hear sound tones as I walk it's making me shake a little everybody this frequency so hang on bringing uh, tears to my eyes actually just a second I uh, can actually hear these incredible sounds and echoes there's an echo in my head even my ears and my breathing I'm breathing um, there's a breath in this there's a breath inside this hallway as I'm walking it's actually a hallway that kind of has the shape of a tunnel surrounded spherically by this beautiful white light and the, 
there's a rhythm in here, a breathing rhythm that I'm feeling through every cell of my body. And I'm also aware of a reflective quality in here, almost as if I'd, I'm surrounded by mirrors, but I'm not surrounded by mirrors, but I'm just aware that these, the sides of this tunnel feel reflective. I'm emerging now out into this vast field of beautiful bright white light. It's alive, and in its a presence, I'm looking, feel as if I'm submerged in, well, I'm not submerged, but I'm engulfed in, millions and billions of eyes, E-Y-E-S, eyes. And those eyes are a presence, a breathing, pulsing, rhythmic, alive, dynamically alive awareness and presence. Sorry about this, everybody. I'm, I'm kind of in awe of where I am, to be honest. Every cell of my body is being penetrated by this. When we ask about what God is, or the Creator, this is what it is. It's incredible, brilliant, white light that is filled with billions of eyes. But those eyes are alive and it's not like many beings. I'm not feeling that these eyes are each a separate being. I'm feeling that these eyes are creator, all of them. Incredible love, everybody. Incredible, incredible love, never ending. And it's a, it's a breathing. I'm in a, it's in a, it's a breathing presence. A rhythm. Give me another minute because I am seeing something else in, coming into being, into, into awareness. So just a second. So when we want to define God, I could tell you that it, it is like a being, except I wouldn't limit it as a being, but it is dynamically incredibly aware, alive, pulsating, breathing, loving, ever, ever. I can't see anything else. It's just, it's everywhere. And I'm feeling a smile now from this presence, as if to say, there's nothing to worry about anyone. Everything is love. Everything is love. The intention is for bliss and enjoyment. Life and love seem to be the most important things. There is no judgment here whatsoever. And I am aware that as this presence desires, and as this presence speaks or vibrates, is what it's really saying, I'm not seeing a language, as it vibrates a command or an intention, new creations come into being, whatever it desires, whatever it vibrates, comes into existence. I can't see an origin, anybody. I'm, I'm in here asking, where did it begin? It's laughing at me when I ask the question, a huge laugh. So let me, let me see now, just to say it. 
its answer to me is when I say how did you begin it just says I am it laughs uproariously and just says I almost like I just am or I am I'm the great I am it's like saying to me well how are you in existence you know you're in you're in existence because you are no other explanation needed is what it's saying I am that's the answer now we have a wonderful comment in the chat box from a participant that says this sounds amazing I wish I could feel that too really I'm very I'm very weepy here everyone I have tears in my eyes this the feeling of this is just so incredible absolutely incredible go ahead Ahana. the next question touches on something that you mentioned there about God's source does God have a gender is do you feel from what you're feeling there and what you're seeing there that there is a a masculinity or a, or a femininity about it in any way all right just give me a minute See what I hear source saying is there's a there's a million elements to it I know at this dimension we're used to dividing things up in masculine and feminine but what I feel it's I feel like I'm actually in these cells of God if I could call them that or in these eyes or presence and what I'm aware of is there's billions of elements to it so the answer is it would say I am masculine I am feminine I am much more and then I'm none of it so what is imparting to me is that the dynamism we call life is filled with a myriad of colors colors we've never even seen before it's it encompasses taste and smell and delight and sharing and presence and so many there's so many elements I'm in a burst I'm in a burst of life I'm in it is so it encompasses so much more so it definitely is not it's saying it's not identifying itself with a singular and it's calling masculine or feminine a singular it's not identifying itself but yet it does encompass all of that so it would not want us to go there you know it's saying you look you're so much more I feel like I'm in these almost like these starbursts of white light that are just filled mostly I'm seeing colors you know I'm seeing little geometrical shapes in these bursts that are filled with colors but all those colors are all dynamic elements in and of themselves but they're all together they all make up the whole thing you can't really separate them out because if you did you know you couldn't call a singularity God you know that's it just wouldn't do it all right Ahano okay it answers our next question which was is there more than one God I think where this question is coming from is our small idea that there that there is a God that many people might attribute to the God of religions for example and it's puzzling has always been puzzling to me as to why one religion would have one God and another religion would have a different God so in that context I think the question is being asked is there more than one God okay well here's sources answer now I want everyone to keep in mind that I am in a very different place here I am NOT on earth I am NOT in, in earth history so I'm not answering this question from any perception of an earthly God not Jehovah not Allah not Jesus not any of those beings because those are all earth beings so I'm not answering this question I I'm, I'm in this place which 
is way beyond all this. All right, everyone? And the answer is, of course, there's billions of gods, is what Source's answer is. So, in a way, there's this singular awareness presence that I am feeling, but that presence has billions of eyes. And it's calling every one of those eyes God. So, that's the answer to that question. But I'm not seeing that those eyes are all separate gods. They feel like they're still part of this one huge presence. That is is a huge awareness. I hope that answers. Yes, super. Is God and Prime Creator the same? Yes, it would accept being called Prime Creator in the context of what I just said. Yeah. Why was human life created? So the first thing I'm hearing is I'm getting an image. Now keep in mind again, everybody, I am up in this place here. So I'm answering these questions from this place that I'm at. So I'm in this presence. This presence has has all these striations of what we could call light coming out of it as I answer this question and source is showing me that to say you are all a part of me is the answer and I feel love I, so I will get clear on that answer but the first thing it does want to impart is you can imagine a vast presence that has all these striations of light and every one of those striations of light is one of us it feels like it would be gathering all of that to itself saying you are all part of me and every single pinpoint of light coming out of this presence is a different aspect of creation and it's pulling it all towards itself saying first thing it wants us to know is we are all part of it. In other words, its very being composes us as well as everything else in creation. I'm trying to go to the form question because i got to come down a little bit just a second. It feels as if all creation has come out of God's heart. And I'm only using that word to describe the love that I'm feeling. Love is why we're here. Love is the reason we are all created. Why life has been created. What I'm feeling about the human form, in fact, what I'm feeling about all different forms of life, and I'm not just talking our planet. I feel like I'm looking at the, the diversity of life that is, that is out there in this field of God. Language is really inadequate right now, everyone. And a lot of those expressions of light don't have forms. Some have forms, have manifested to forms, and some are not form. They're just light or color or sound or, or geometry. There's so many different parts of God. But what I feel Source saying is, Form itself could never come into being if the elements of God were not in place. In other words, because I'm looking at this huge vastness of elements, it's saying that all things that come from it have pieces of these elements of God inside of them. And what it's saying is it doesn't matter if it itself deliberately created our human form. The fact is, you're still composed of the elements of God. From the lowliest, the lowliest life form to the most lofty in our perception. It's all composed of pieces of God. And that's all that it wants us to really realize is that we are all gathered unto it. And it delights in us. So that's that's the answer. Did it deliberately create your form in one way? It's saying, yes, I did because you're composed of me. 
but you know, did I mold this particular human into being not directly, but yes, directly? Okay, so I hope that, I hope people can grasp what I'm trying to say here. It's saying that don't be focusing so much on the fact that, you know, how your human form came into the human form. It came into form because of the elements of God. It could not have done so without it. All right. But the most important thing is you are alive, you have awareness, you have an ability to partake in creation with God. And that is all about love, love and loving, love's desire. And that is what it wants us to understand and realize. Well, I'm in awe of these answers, Angel Rose, and I want to read you a little comment from a participant that says, what an awesome answer. I thought I knew the answer to that. I thought I knew the answer that there is only one God. So our next question moves on to whether life itself is intentional or an accident. And I expect that the questioner is asking about life as we know it. Is this life as we know it intentional? All right, well, in the big picture, life is definitely intentional, and we already covered that so far. In the big picture, from from this presence's desire, life was definitely intentional. Let's look at life on Earth. So I'm still getting a yes, and the reason I'm getting a yes is because... The presence of God's source is a loving intention. It is a desire, a strong love desire for creation to be. And that means that that intention does extend to every single place in the universe. So it's the intention behind the life force energy that allows life to come into being everywhere and that is what is behind everything so yes is the answer on all levels as that life force loving intention manifests itself in a myriad of diverse expressions unlimited source would say every single minute expression has behind it its intention. Otherwise, it could never come into being at all, never express itself in any way if that was not the underlying pattern. Now, it's being really clear that it itself does not take that life force desire and turn it into anything hateful. I have to be clear because I could see how it would be a logical question for someone to ask when you're looking at evil, let's say, does God intend evil? And what I'm getting is no, it does view that as, in a way, distortions of its intention. Its intention is clearly, clearly, unlimited heartfelt love and desire for the pleasure, for the enjoyment, for the delight of creation. The fact that elements themselves can be rearranged, okay, they can be isolated out and used to produce specific things. Source does not have a hand in that. What I'm hearing is it sees it as unfortunate that there are life forms that have, who really do not understand what they're made of. I mean, I am looking, is it said that to me, I got this flash of the most beautiful colors and patterns you could ever imagine. That, that if people 
people down here or life force entities that come into being, if they could understand the elements that they're composed of, they would never be manipulating those elements in such a way as to create anything destructive. It just would not happen. So I, I do feel a sense of, well, Source is giving me words like unfortunate, misfortunate, when these things occur, unfortunate. It's shaking its head in a way, you know, to say it's unfortunate, but every form like that will be unraveled at a certain point. So on the one level, it's unfortunate because people get confused about what God is. It's harder to remember what you're made of once you start taking elements and rearranging them in a destructive way. Okay, it's unfortunate. But it also looks to me that it also knows at some point in its evolution it will either be destroyed itself or go back into light, even though that seems like that could take a really, really long time if something has, let's just say, rearranged itself to such a point in its elements that it is clearly not remembering. That could take a long time for all of that to unravel. But it looks like eventually it does unravel at some point. Okay, Hanno, did I answer that question? Okay, it's very clear that you're answering these questions from that level that is beyond our own 3D experience. And I need to bring it down, in a sense, into the level of the three dimensions for us to understand the answer to a lot of these questions. Like, for example, is there life on other planets? Okay, now, you know, I'm being answered from the context of how we may be thinking about it. So Source is saying, first of all, that of course life is throughout the whole entire universe. I mean, life is, life is everywhere. But the real question, it, it's saying you're asking, are there life forms on other planets like us? Is what it's understanding you're really asking. And the answer is, some planets are teeming with life and other planets don't have life forms like ourselves on them. There are planets that were teeming with life and those people, let's just say, destroyed their environment, made it inhospitable. So there are places that did support life that don't anymore, but will again, at, it will again someday, sources say, that what looks like a barren planet that once had life is really a planet that is, in terms of its internal workings, it is kind of regenerating itself, and that can take millennia, actually. But those planets will have life again at some point because I'm now feeling like I'm in the cosmos, and I'm seeing how cosmoses change. In other words, different universes change. They may take billions of years, but they do change because the elements that are in the universes and creation change. They rearrange themselves constantly, and that process develops new life forms. It could take billions of years for some, but rest assured that everything will have life again on it. Different life forms is really what I'm saying. Even if it's been barren, quote unquote, for, you know, millions of years, there is a process of regeneration happening with those elements. And there will be a point where we will see the diversity of various life forms reappear. But there are other planets and other universes that have whole civilizations on them, similar to ours, some different than ours. Uh, you've got a, a, such a wide array of life everywhere that, yes, the answer is yes. You know, there's definitely life on other planets. 
When you spoke earlier about the multiple eyes of God, let's call them entities of God, is the sun a God? We're not calling those eyes entities. Let's be really clear about that. Entity is a very, very, very small word for what I'm feeling. It wouldn't even come close. These eyes are living, breathing. It's a living, breathing presence. So that's the best I can do with our language. But is the sun, our sun, a God? Well, it has its own presence. It wouldn't, it wouldn't be called a God, but it's certainly a magnificent being for sure. Hugely magnificent being, actually. And I feel incredible love from it as well. If you could imagine a star in the sky that has self-awareness, it does feel like the sun has self-awareness. It's a presence, it's a being, its desire is, think of it really, how much nourishment it actually does give or contributes to the contribution of life forms. In other words, the sun itself is composed of elements that allow other life forms to exist. So it's a presence that is extremely loving in that way. It is happy that it is a source of, of light and warmth and stimulation for life forms to be able to come into being and exist. But it wouldn't want to be called a god. A god is, is, is a word, actually, that I'm hearing it say it would like us to reserve to the prime creator and really not call anything else a god, not even a highly advanced being. God with a small g is silly, really. It's saying it's not only silly, but it's separative. And so as magnificent as this being is, and it has no problem being called a being, of its own design, no problem being appreciated for what its donation is, and that it's a being, but in terms of God, which implies worship, it's saying, no, 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 don't go there. So does the sun have a consciousness? Yes, it does. It's self-awareness. Yeah. It does have self-awareness. Just as, you know, our human form, you know, we have a head, we have two arms, two legs. This is the shape that our consciousness is inhabiting at the minute or being. The sun is a being. Its shape is round and it's glowing and it's contained of different elements than us. You know, but it's just as much a life form being, but it, it does have self-awareness. Can you tell us what is the Holy Spirit? It's a good question. The Holy Spirit is the presence of God within you. And more than that, it is the awareness of God within you. So that's in every single thing that's ever been and will be. It is a spirit. Spirit, see, this is so, language is so hard today, guys. It is a, it is the God spirit energy within us. So it, it's, it's contained inside every single one of us. And it is the remembrance of where you came from, what you're all about, what you're doing here. It is the remembrance of God, actually. I'm getting comments and gurus that are in awe and they're wow and it's amazing now when we pray in our minds does God hear our prayers or are we praying to our higher selves or another God assigned entity oh, that's a great question the answer is is God definitely hears every prayer and more than that, everything is felt by God. 
Once again, I'm up in the upper levels. I'll distinguish my answers now between upper levels and lower levels. I'm in the upper level speaking with this presence. And it's almost like every form of expression is a cell in its body. So it feels everything. Every, every aspect of everything. Every aspect of you, it feels Every single experience, every thought, every emotion, every plea, it's felt in God's body. It's aware of it. Let me see where it wants to go from here. How it seems to respond. You have to remember what Source is composed of. Source is composed of such intense love and desire that every prayer is answered with this love now every prayer is answered with love that love may let's say okay god here there's a process here everybody so let me first say that god's response to every prayer is is love and peace and that love and peace, it's not like God sits up there and says, okay, uh, Johnny, I hear your prayer for a new job. So go here, go to Sally next door, and you'll meet somebody. I don't feel that God gets specific like that in terms of answering every single prayer in that way. How it answers it, though, is with its presence. Its presence is a pulse of incredible, intense love. Now, how a prayer gets answered for you translates down into these lower dimensions because now we're at the, we're down in the element level. In other words, different life forms are combinations of different elements of God. And because God doesn't deliberately create a form, the way elements combine and become something has a lot to do with physics, let's say, in terms of how other elements combine and how they react. So let's just say you're Johnny down here. You've made prayer to God. God responds with an incredible pulse of love. And that love or that pulse coming down through the different layers will manifest itself in a way that has to do with your particular combination of elements. In other words, a prayer, two people can be making the same prayer to God. Let's just use a job as an example, just because it's simple. But the way that answer will manifest down through the levels has everything to do with each person's combination of elements their consciousness and how it perceives and believes, this is where that love of God will come down and manifest the best it can according to the makeup of you. And the makeup of you has everything to do with not only the combination of your physical elements, but the combination of your consciousness, your beliefs, and your thoughts. So we really do have to make a distinction here, but God's answer always, when it feels prayers, is to send out stronger and stronger pulses of incredibly powerful love and comfort. Okay, so as that comes down through the levels, it's the reason why some people seem to get answered immediately in the way that they want, why other people don't seem to hear an answer it all has to do, this is when we come way down now, I'm in the lower levels of us, and we're separated, you see. We perceive ourselves as separated, finite, with our own personalities, our own beliefs. So manifestation, as it comes down through those levels of elements that it has to work with, will manifest accordingly. I hope that's clear. Yeah, that was beautiful. And in fact, our next question ties in with that and asks, 
how can we be sure that we are communicating with Source when we pray and not some other entity? And if I could tack in my own question along with that, Angel Rose, when somebody prays to, let's say, the likes of Jehovah or Allah or Buddha or somebody else who they might regard as God in their own belief system, does that same prayer have the same impact? Does it connect with, with, with God's source, the I am presence, or does it stop right there with that, with that believed entity? Okay, well, well, let's go to part one first, Dahana. Could you repeat that one for me? Certainly. How can we be sure we are communicating with God's source and not some other entity when we pray? Well, because God hears everything. I mean, you know, I, there's nothing God misses. That's how you can be sure. And that is a separate answer from you, from when people pray deliberately to a lesser God. So I'll answer that in a minute. But the big answer, how can you be sure God hears you? God always hears us. That presence of love always hears us and always responds with that pulse of love and comfort. Always, always. Okay, now, answers that come from God are always loving answers. They are always based in love and they always impart with them a feeling of deep knowing and deep peace. This is how you can tell you're getting, you're, you, you've actually received God's pulse of love to you, is you will immediately, all fear will disappear, all worry will go, you'll have a deep, deep sense of inner peace and love, where you know that there was never anything to worry about. It will make you more loving in general as well. A pulse from God's source will affect you directly in making you more loving, making, see, I'm getting an image of a sphere. So when you receive God's impulse, it's almost like now you're in a beautiful sphere of beautiful, peaceful, loving light, and you'll feel it throughout your whole body. And whatever you were concerned about will disappear. You'll just know that everything's all right. That's coming from God. If you receive thoughts that are commands or something telling you what to do, okay, I would always be very suspect of, of any kind of a being who's telling you what to do, telling you what to think, telling you what to believe. None of that would be coming from God. Because God's pulse is loving, and in that love, you just know. You just know from a deep, deep, peaceful place inside of you. You know, you function from that. You know everything is all right. Okay? And that will naturally lead you to the miracles. So let me just say this, because it's coming in. When you receive that pulse of God in reply to anything, like I just said, the result will be deep peace, a sense of love and calmness. All your worries will disappear. And in that, in that place and presence, miracles happen, which means elements are automatically rearranged to take you in the right direction. Okay, that is a direct effect from the pulse of God. Could you read me now your part two question, Ahanu, about praying to specific gods? Yes, you did mention in the past that Jehovah is not a true God, the, the God source that we speak about today, but is another entity that people worship. And what I wanted to know was, when someone prays to these lesser gods, let's call them for want of a better word, does the I Am Presence hear those prayers and respond? Well, I answered that, that God hears every prayer and responds the same way to every prayer. And I already just described all that. So the big God, the real God, always answers every prayer. Now, if you're praying to a perceived God, such as Allah or Jehovah or any of those, 
And this has to do, let me just say, with any any other entity that you pray to, whether it's an archangel, whether it's an ascended master or a saint. If you're going to direct your prayers to those entities, what you will receive back, two things you're going to receive back. One, the big God still does hear the prayer and still does send the pulse of love to you. But if you're in a place where you're focusing an answer from a lesser being, and I'm including everything I just mentioned as a lesser being, you will receive an answer in the likeness of the quality of that being. Now, that could be quite magnificent. I mean, if you're praying to a, let's just say, an angelic presence that is a beautiful presence in the sense that it's made up of elements that are extremely loving and beautiful, you will receive an answer according to the design of that being. If you are praying to Jehovah, who was a warring god, it's likely you might hear commands back. It's likely you might hear somebody coming into your life that's telling you what to do or that has a judgment about something. Okay, so you you need to understand that when beings come into form, they all have particular qualities based on what they are, who they are. Okay, so whoever you pray to, you're going to get a likeness in response. Now, it's unfortunate if you're praying to a God that is a God of war and destruction or a God of judgment because it's going to keep you in, in that perception. But it still doesn't change the fact that the big God also answered you. Whether you're able to receive the big God's pulse of love will have everything to do, like I said, with your own beliefs about gods and what you think they're about. So I hope I made that clear. The next question is, why does God not fix the earth and the way that things currently are? And we meditate for a new earth. Why do we have to meditate to have a new world at all? Um, <laughs> It's kind of interesting that God's first reply is, why would it fix what you're creating? In other words, it sounds like a simple answer, but it's really not now. And there's obviously a lot to this. So just a second. God already has just told us that it continually is sends out love. It is love. It is and such an incredible love that that's all it is. Love and desire or love to be expressed. That's what it is. Now, when you have your own self-awareness, you have life forms that have developed to the point of consciousness and self-awareness. Their makeup and what they perceive and what they choose creates all sorts of scenarios. And so what Source is saying to us is the fact that we see a world that needs fixing shows us that we have errors in our perception because there's so much else going on. When God looks down at the earth, it sees lots of love happening everywhere. First of all, everything is okay. I first have to say that when God looks down at anything, no matter what's happening anywhere, the truth is, is it's all all right. I'm going to go give you the image again of imagining that there's all these different waves of thought going around. There's all these different ideas floating around, perceptions floating around. And all of those things will coalesce into a particular expression. And then they may unravel or they may stay if they're enhanced by consciousness. So there's a huge diversity of things going on all the time. It's a constant movement. So God's not interested in coming down and rearranging things and making them appear as all nicey-nicey. It's not interest. That's not what it's about. It's about the fact that its life forms develop different degrees of consciousness and awareness, and they play with creation, and they mold with their thoughts and their perceptions. So the responsibility 
of the quality of what each one of us experiences is, is up to us. What it does is it reminds you at the back of everything, love is all there is. Love is all there is. Now, if you want to use your thoughts to create other than that or to experience judgment or to condemn other people or find people guilty or make a mess of the environment and rearrange those elements. By the way, even the environment's going to fix itself eventually. I first have to just say to people, okay? If you want to focus on what's wrong or look at, look at things where you're not seeing love instead, that's a decision for you to have that experience. Because in the big picture, love is still in existence. It is never, ever, that's the one thing you can always be sure of. This presence of love that is God is never going to be affected by anything we do with our consciousness. We can destroy a planet and God knows that at some point in existence, that planet will revive itself. So what it's saying is we're foolish. We use our consciousness foolishly because we believe in separation. We believe in competition. We use our, we use our thoughts and our beautiful loving energy to create ideas that are just so not based on what God is that it's really up to us. In other words, this is where freedom comes in. This presence of God is not interested in going in and taking away your beautiful creative powers, which it would be doing if it came down and suddenly rearranged everything. What I hear it saying is, why have creation if you're going to go in and mold it a certain way? They would take the delight away from it. So we can understand really how free we really are. We're really free to rearrange the elements of our own consciousness and change the, what we experience and change what we donate to the collective. We have such freedom to do that. That's, that's the delight of our creation. Okay, our next question, Enge Rose, and a very practical one about life and death. I pray faithfully for those that I have loved and who have passed on and are with the light of God, in what way can we assist, if at all, here on earth with those that have passed on? And it's a really good question because a lot of people, when they do cross over, many, many do go to the light and experience this love that I've been talking about today. But there are some that don't. There are some that are stuck. So any prayer is really an intention of love that you send towards someone. And that's really all you have to do because, like I say, part of what the problem is is that we have forgotten this love that I'm talking about. We, we really confuse things. But love is really sending somebody heartfelt love or a blessing. You know, a blessing is really a donation of love to somebody where you're just, in your, from your heart, you're sending this pulse of beautiful love that's the best thing you can do for anyone who's passed on because it's all about them feeling that and being changed by it. Remember I said that when somebody really does receive that love, that opens the whole thing to a miraculous shift and a miraculous expression. Let's just say a miraculous rearrangement. That's what love causes. It opens the door to miracles. You know, miracles, like I say, being defined as elements being rearranged in such a way that they express a loving outcome. That's what I'm saying. Now, a loving outcome isn't always just a feeling. A loving outcome can rearrange itself into what that person needs. That is how love expresses itself for each person. It fills the lack. It fills the perceived lack. And rearranges the elements to fill that lack. Do we have the ability to create our own human surroundings to feel like we are connected to source all the time and to manifest our own desires 
And if so, what does source want us to know about this? We do have to make this our last question, Angel Rose. Do we have the ability to create our own human surroundings? You have the ability to create anything from your perception. Because perception and desire does rearrange elements. You know, so think that you're, when you have a desire, then you apply deliberate thought to it. The elements that are everywhere start to rearrange themselves into the form of your desire. So you do have the ability to change your environment, to make yourself feel that you're in God's presence. That might mean something different to another person than it means to you. So, of course, you have the right to do that. What was part two, Akhanam? Do we have the ability to feel like we are connected to source all the time when we're creating these human surroundings that manifest our desires? Well, your ability to feel connected to source is really dependent on how willing you are to see only love everywhere. And, you know, and that's a decision. Yes, it's possible to feel God's love everywhere and to see God's love in everything. But it's a choice, you see. It's a choice on where we put our attention. In every moment, really, you know, we're deciding if we're going to see that or see something else. That is the constant that is always, always there, is that source's loving presence. And all that that means is constantly available to us. Remember that your Holy Spirit is made of that. Your Holy Spirit is, is the remembrance of that love inside of you. It just depends on where we focus our attention. And this is where beliefs and perceptions can come in to really, really mess with us. It really is a simple choice, what I hear Source say. Just decide for that and nothing else. Okay, that brings us to the summary of what we've heard today and from the comments we've seen and read in the chat box it has been absolutely beautiful creation is a vast sea of life force energy desire and vibration composed of life and love creation is a waveform of undulating light and color which bathes everyone and everything in love and desire. Once the desire for creation existed, it became a function of intense love that never ends. Creation is a desire for love to be expressed. God's source can be likened to a giant white radiating sun that can be entered into with intention. God source can be likened to a sphere of white light that breathes the frequency of reflective love. God source reflects a breathing, pulsing, alive awareness of all life everywhere. God source is understood with infinite seeing eyes, aware of the dynamic frequency of loving everlasting life. The intention of life is bliss. There is no judgment in God. New creations come into existence through intention and the desire inherent in love. I am is the answer to the origins of all life. The dynamism that we call life is filled with colors we have no awareness of and contains starbursts of dynamic sound and light that holds no boundaries. The gods of which we are aware in our earthly understanding implies billions of gods. Every single pinpoint of the light of God is an aspect of creation. Every creation has its origins in the heart of God. The diversity of God's source creation is too vast to describe or explain with the inadequacy of our language. 
from the lowliest to the most lofty in our perception, we are all gathered unto God. All life is intentional because all life contains the desire of God to express love. Evil is viewed by God as distortions of its divine intention. Elements of creation can be rearranged and used to create unfortunate distortions. If we understood we were composed of the elements of God, we would have no desire to create distortions. At some point in the evolution of distortions, they will eventually unravel unto God. Life is everywhere, including planets and galaxies, but they may not contain life as we understand it. Universes are a constant state of change that is always developing new life forms. The sun is a living, breathing presence that is a magnificent being of love. The sun is an aware being of love that contributes to support life on other planets. The sun has self-awareness, but does not imply that it is a god. The Holy Spirit is the awareness of God within us. God hears and feels every prayer, and every prayer is answered with love. God answers prayers with its presence of intense love that manifests in how an individual's consciousness can assimilate it. The I Am Presence of God hears us even when we pray to lesser gods. All worry and fear disappears when we hear the pulse of love from God. Functioning from the pulse of love from God empowers us to miracles. Miracles are the rearranging of molecules. Directing prayers to entities, saints or angelic beings will receive the answer in the quality and design of that being. God does not fix our miscreations because in God's creation everything is already in a perfect state of bliss. The illusion of our miscreations keeps us in a sense of separateness from God. We use our consciousness foolishly to create ideas of separation from God. Many who have died can be helped with the power of loving prayer. All prayers and blessings are ascending of the intention of love. All love causes a miraculous rearrangement of elements. Perception and desire rearrange elements into the form of our desire. And finally, it is a choice in every moment to want to see and feel God's love everywhere. So that brings us to the end of our session today. I'm going to ask Angel Rose to come back now and close the records. Thank you everyone for your loving presence today. It means so much to us to be able to bring this information forward with the help of all of you. And let me just remind anyone if you're interested in the class, do go to worldofempowerment.com and register. Thank you very much. Yes, and we will speak about the future on the 9th of February, Inner Earth on the 16th of February, Conception, Birth and Reproduction on the 9th of March, Saints and Sages on the 16th of March, and Aging and Longevity on the 30th of March. So we thank you for your presence here today, and we appreciate you being here and participating. We love you all so much. Until next week, blessings from myself, Ahanu, and from Angel Rose.